In an increasingly superficial, apathetic and materialistic society, issues of faith and Christian values are often seen as outdated and unfashionable. To find out whether a more spiritual approach can provide a fulfilling alternative, the BBC invited five contemporary men to spend 40 days living at Worth Abbey, a Roman Catholic monastery in Sussex. We believe that what we're offering is in fact the answer to that dissatisfaction with life which many people are experiencing. Now, four weeks into their stay, each of the volunteers has embarked on an intensely personal spiritual journey. Journeys which, for some, would come to a remarkable conclusion. Life in all Benedictine monasteries is based on the rule of St. Benedict, which was written early in the 6th century as a practical and spiritual guide to monastic living. As well as working and eating with the monks, the new arrivals are required to attend church six times a day, starting at 6.20 every morning. Fresh from a job in the soft porn industry, 29-year-old Tony Burke arrived at the monastery as a non-believer, keen to challenge the religious beliefs of the monks. I'm not a bigot. I want to be convinced. If they can't convince me, I'll just go away from this thing unconvinced. You know, that's my challenge to them, and in return, their challenge to me. But after four weeks' total immersion in monastic life, Tony has grown to like the monks and respect their values. Thirty-six-year-old Gary McCormick has always struggled to like himself. In a bid to find acceptance as a troubled teenager in Northern Ireland, he joined the Protestant paramilitaries. He was in and out of prison until he found God 13 years ago. I just want to be content and at peace with who I am. And you know, it's starting to happen. And I never, ever, ever thought in my life it would happen in a place like this here. Abbot Christopher carefully planned the group's schedule. The first fortnight was about settling into the monastic routine and absorbing Benedict's principles. Weeks three and four were set aside for more in-depth discussion of Christian values and how to interpret the Bible. This has been particularly hard for Peter Griffith. As a retired teacher and published poet, he struggled to get beyond what he sees as the violent and sexist language of the Old Testament. My concern would be to invite you to see the text as saying something very real to your inner world. I'm just asking myself all the time, is this really relevant to us now? 37-year-old Nicholas Buxton has been on a spiritual search for the last 10 years. Now a PhD student at Cambridge, Nick is hoping his time here will rekindle some of the religious passion dampened by years of academic study. It gives you a tremendous joy. It's sort of, um, you know, you feel, you feel like you're really being who you're supposed to be. And, um, and I was very much hoping that, that, that doing this, would, I would kind of be able to reconnect with that. Anthony Wright is 32 and works for a legal publishing company. He's clashed repeatedly with some members of the group and is struggling to be open about his past. Anthony's been willing to explore the unresolved feelings of rejection by his mother but only in private conversations with monks. I feel as if I spent my childhood crying all the time. I was very sad all the time. So this me, who I am, I created this person in order to get away a lot of the pain because half of my friends wouldn't even drink, they wouldn't even know any of this. Alongside their individual struggles, the group has also had to learn to live as a community. According to Benedict, this is the foundation on which monastic life is built. It teaches patience, understanding and forgiveness. For Anthony and Gary in particular, it's not been easy. 
Mr. Hannah Mike. Mr. Cross. Mr. Hannah Mike. No, but I'm not. No, but I'm not. Yes, you are. All the time. Of course she you are, Andy. How many people have you fell out with this year since you've been here? It's at the beginning of the fifth week, just before the regular morning session with Father Luke, that tensions between Gary and Anthony finally boil over. Even before the whole group is assembled, Anthony has walked out and is refusing to attend. We definitely won down. Yeah, it's gone downstairs. Yeah. What are you going for? No. I'm fed up with it. You have to apologise to him, but you just go and find him, because there's no point in missing this. I'm not doing nothing. I'm sorry. This morning when I walked in here, it was like I was cleaning the table or something. He said something again. I didn't say anything. And then when he tells me to shush, I just... I, I'm a loud person, so I can't help it. I'm not doing it for badness. That I could have said something mm. loads of times and haven't said anything. I've kept my mouth shut. Anyway. Shall we begin? Yes. Gary has had enough of what he perceives as Anthony's arrogance. After the session, it's Tony who steps in as peacemaker. Your personality's clash, fine. Um, but don't let it ruin your, your time here. Because, because if, you're, if you end up... No, but saying, it won't. But it won't. But it won't, because I've already taken... But I've already learned, no, but I've already learned something. And I can take that away. He's obviously learned nothing. You know, for somebody to go, shh, like out there, Straight with defeat within you, somebody, you're, you're thinking somebody's telling you to shut up. And, that, and, and for me, <clears throat> many's the time I've been told that, and I've just sat there like a little lamb and shut up and felt so insignificant. Well, I'm starting to feel a little significant for, the first, for, for probably the first time in my life. Just think when you're in prison, you know, the whole thing's ruled on confrontation and, and supremacy Let me ask you a question. and male domination. Let me ask you a question. And he kind of, he's bringing that Let with him a Let me ask you a question. Prison is a word, yeah, as in confined. Does he not feel that other people have, have had themselves imprisoned in yes. other places? Yeah, of course. So why does it always feel sorry for me? And, and they, like, you know, you're always preaching that you've read the Bible and you've done this and you've done that or whatever, but you're obviously not learning anything from it. Being in a community like us here, you have to face up to yourself and you have to face up to the struggles of your past. And I don't think that he wants to do that. The fact is there is an issue. And we're in the, the, you know, the best place in the world to address that issue and get over it. We're in a monastery surrounded by religion and God and men of God, the most forgiving place on the planet. <laughs> here, here endeth the. You know, what I have to tell you, you're good. You know. <laughs> I have to give you that. You're good. You are. Thank you very much, Teddy. Oh, oh dear. That afternoon, although he's supposed to be working in the garden with Anthony, Gary seeks out the abbot and Father Luke. Hi, Gary. All right, Abbott. Yeah. The other day when you asked me to bring up about the community meeting, I done it on a oh. Thursday evening, right. and uh, I think it would be very appropriate at the present time if we had a community meeting. I, I, I went back to my room after that thing, and I was just, I was thinking to myself, you know, it's okay going to the church six times a day and looking at this and looking at that, but if people aren't being honest with one another and trying to build that sense of community, then it's a total waste of time even bothering trying to do anything of that aspect, if you know what I mean. That evening, Gary gets his meeting. So... Gary, I think it was sort of coming from you originally. Yeah. Would you like to say what? Obviously, at the present time, there's something between Anthony and myself. I would like to be able to put input and for him to put input into my life to try and sort it 